We are much indebted to this little village, the mining village of Gavarano, whose roots go deep into the soil, an old cluster of houses that is no longer of any use. Without knowing it, a whole generation of miners has left on this hill a monument to their hard and sullen existence. Times have changed, and a house must now be a real house, for a man's life is today something that concerns all of us. But what purpose would be served here in Gavarano? What sense would it make if its people were just left to bask in the sun? Security without purpose, emptiness. Our debt, then, is to safeguard your work, to make it as safe as any other kind of work, so that those who depend on you in Gavarano will not be tormented by fears and anxieties. And that is why our story is dedicated to those of you who remain outside the mine. Let us take a look at the way your men pass their working lives. The colour prints of past years presented a horrific picture of the mine. Gloomy lights, bodies streaming with sweat, staring eyes. Today, the latest air cooling plant enables a man to breathe normally. Until a few years ago, the rock face gave off a fine, deadly dust. The drillers quivered and shook as if in the grip of an electric current. Nowadays, they pierce the rock with a drilling bit flush round with water, and they wear masks so that their struggle with the rock face may be a fairer one. They used to drink water to make up for sweating. Now they quench their thirst with specially prepared drinks, and the air they breathe is practically the same as it is down there in the village. At one time, the products of the mine were carried on the backs of the men who worked it. Today, everything is much easier. What was once a perilous existence is now no more dangerous than any other way of life. plated hands in all human activity, but it can be forestalled by providing for every emergency. There was a time when the miners returned to the pit head, exhausted by the night's work. Now they get artificial ray treatment if they want it. They revive themselves in the glow of this huge lamp and make up for long hours spent in darkness. The story goes that a boy once hid himself in one of these tip cars and set off on the giddiest ride of his life. A longing for the sun, the fresh air, the feel of the wind had made him envy the iron ore its journey to the sea. They found him, poor lad, when the tipper dumped its load. There's no longer any need for a youngster to take such risks. This iron pyritis is used for extracting sulfuric acid. It sets off without the dreams and longings of a boy without the groans and curses of his overburdened father and grandfather. This is a town built of metal within the red brick walls of the old city of Novara. Its people constructed these soaring pipes, almost like organ pipes, and now they live for them. For what looks like an uninhabited world, a cathedral without ceremonies. But in fact, the men are there, new men with a proper respect for life and for safety devices. No small achievement if, in the foundry, where generations of overworked men toiled and labored, the fiery metal is now coaxed on its way from the shelter of a well-protected control point. Nor is it without significance that a friendly, sensible word should greet the workers from nearby walls with the reminder, protect yourself. An automatic defense operates between man and his machine. Instinct and reason. As this instructor is explaining, those who keep company with these machines are sometimes badly let down, blindly betrayed. Here, in the row factory, plastic materials are made. The apparatus you see is a protective device for the removal of toxic substances used in the various processes. These garments, these masks, are also for protection. Someone with the necessary appliances to check up on whether the air is properly conditioned. More apparatus, this time to find out if the physical condition of employees requires attention. 
Here we have a happy picture of our earthly lot, the need to learn, to make something of our lives, in short, to live. But there's nothing like experience. And the older they grow, the better will these boys understand what the word prudent means. This training center in Milan will help them. It will teach them that although precaution is something that young people scorn, it implies respect for human life. It can be a lifesaver. The hands, for instance. The hands must be used with knowledge and forethought, not as a way of looking for trouble, but with due respect for the instruments that are there to help us. There's trouble enough gas, for example. Many people's sight has been irreparably damaged simply because they have not washed away some harmful matter from the eyes. Caustic substances require special washing, and when the whole body is contaminated, water is not enough. If we agree that everyone has his own particular character, we must also agree that psychology enables us to find out what we are best fitted to do in life. The psychologist reveals what we do not know about ourselves from the depths of what we say. He is able to draw conclusions that will help us to play the part for which we are most suited. And that is an advantage to all of us, as well as to the person concerned. We are in Avigliana, and here we meet this little fellow, Ascanio Sobrero, who, ever since he was a boy, suffered weak health and wore a warm pullover, even in summer. Then, to everybody's astonishment, he made a sensational discovery. He invented nitroglycerine, a little man who made a big noise. Sobrero's world was a bright and hopeful one, but thanks to him and his invention, a less steady one. At that time, mothers, daughters, granddaughters, if they used glycerine at all, did so to cure cracked lips. Whoever would have thought that this homely oil would one day make men protect themselves from it with steel and watch over it on television, all to prevent it from blowing up their dear ones. Treated with nitric acid, glycerine was to make a big hit the world over. Such a substance merits respect, so it rides stealthily along these lines. Discretion demands that it should be watched through binoculars. Like temperamental film stars, it travels incognito. Like sleeping dogs, it is best left alone. And since 1949, when the firm opened this industrial hygiene clinic, Monticatini has been riding on safer lines. Transparent bodies. In this state of undress, we are all alike, more or less. Doctors who work for the firm's mines and factories, let us take a look at what they are doing. Specialists testing the respiratory functions. Others, expert in chemistry, are making toxicological tests. Masks, designed to give protection against gases and dust, are being checked up. Two tubes are joined. Yes, it seems they are working. Experiments to check the biological action of substances that might be harmful to the health. And this is where the guinea pigs come in. Everything is done to cure them afterwards. It is their fate to act as our understudies, to stand in for them. In this field, one has to get down to root causes. It is not enough what the eye sees, even the electronic eye. This high-speed centrifugal machine establishes facts which would otherwise escape us. Farmitalia. In the methods and practices it employs, Farmitalia is a progressive establishment. As in Monticatini's other factories, the works doctor, the safety officer, various technicians and workers' representatives are on the first aid committee. The under-manager takes charge of the proceedings and a new overall suit is tested. Uniform safety in safety uniform. Here the air is being filtered, sterilized and conditioned with ultraviolet rays. These strange looking women are handling antibiotics. Man disguises himself in order to pretend that he is someone else. So said a well-known psychologist. Ours may be a materialistic civilization, but it has not completely forgotten the needs of the spirit. For those who disguise themselves in this way, psychologists recommend a little light music. One cannot live with antibiotics all the time, and so those who prepare them take comfort from the strains of Gormley Clama. Meanwhile, the children grow up in the factory, just as nature decreed when she invented the corner of the eye, so that mothers and fathers should not lose sight of what their young are doing. There are 180 doctors and 300 nurses to look after the personnel. They form a small army whose task it is to protect, assist, and when necessary to cure. In short, 
to see that the staff keeps fit and that each man is equal to his job. And here is another of Monticatini's production units, built outside Ferrara, at a spot where the roads melt into the countryside. It is the pride of Italian industry. Words and pictures that may be a trifle stale to many, but they speak for the up-to-date methods, technical devices, safety measures, staff training systems, and so on, that are dear to the hearts of 70,000 Monticatini families scattered all over Italy. What you now see shows how the debt we spoke of earlier on is being repaid. It is a first call on modern industry to square its accounts with man. Fate lurks round every corner. Still, if all possible precautions have been taken to ensure the safety and well-being of the workers, then industry cannot itself be regarded as the blind instrument of a materialistic world, the accomplice of intensive machinery. A world in miniature, this pattern which, by some freak, has taken shape on the bottom of a metal cistern, looks a bit like a map of the world. A world where everything is cared for, man, machine, the whole structure of an industry. Somewhere in the depths of ourselves, somewhere in our subconscious minds, there's an emergency call number that can bring us to the alert and summon up our defenses. It may operate in response to a sudden sense of doubt, fear or anxiety. So too in industry. We must remember that nothing can be done for us unless we are equipped to sound that alarm. Today, a human life is the concern of all of us. And that is why we work for you. For you who, in your turn, work amidst the hazards of dark mines and bustling factories. Gavarano and its people. You it was who started us off. The moral of this story springs from you, from the narrow alleys and bypaths of your old village. The sort of village that is fading into the past and without regret, as fires fade and die beneath the rain. Thank you.